New mini box Masters of Shadow is coming. Many boxes are known for being free to play boxes. They have given us Ritual Beast. They have given us Shiranui. What does this deck bring? It brings us Hanzo, Red Eyes, Melodious. What else is good in here? We have Yosenju, other super rare and ultra rare cards. Let's talk about it. There can only be one winner, and you're looking at him. Let's go. Every deck I'm going to talk about will have combos, plays, and a concept deck list so you will understand these deck types. I'm not going to just read the cards and it goes over your head. You'll see the decks in action before it comes out. Melodious, just like Ritual Beast and Shiranui, this is the main new deck type of the new mini box. What's good with Melodious? Well, a quick overview is you basically have many ways to special summon your monsters on the field with the first movement, the other Melodious monsters. Also, this one special summons. You got three that special summon and a special summon from the deck. And then you use your Soprano or your Fortismiso, whatever this is, to then fusion summon into your fusion, which will be Melodious Maestra or your Bloom Prima. That's the core of this. You want a special summon into a fusion. So let's talk about this before we go into it too deep. Super Team Buddy Force Unite, also a card like Photon Lead or Valhalla, seemingly has great synergy with this deck because it special summons your monsters on the field, and most of these have an effect when special summoned. Now, why do we want to summon this main fusion? Why do we want to make a whole deck around just fusion summoning this card? Well, this is 2400 attack. It just requires two Melodious monsters. We'll talk about how to summon it in a bit, but when you get it out, during either player's turn, it could boost up to 3,000 attack whenever you want by banishing three cards from either player's graveyard. For example, against Dark Magician, you could banish their Rod and their Navigation. Against Shiranui, you could banish their Whirl Flame and their Shiranui Tuners, and it's 3k boosted. Besides that, that's all it pretty much does. Now, the other fusion, it's harder to summon. To summon Bloom Prima, you have to use the Sherberta to even summon this card. When you summon this plus another Melodious with the fusion, it gains 300 per fusion material. So you could use more than two if you want. And then, so if you use just two, it will be 2,500. It can attack twice in the battle phase. Also, if sent to the graveyard any way whatsoever, you could target a Melodious monster in your grave and add it to your hand. The main one you're gonna add back to your hand is likely going to be the Soprano. So we're gonna talk about Soprano because Soprano is the main way to fuse into your Shiberta and your Bloom Prima. So Soprano says, only using the field with it on the field, fusion for your Melodious Fusion. You can't use your hand like the Gravekeepers can. Now on Special Summon, you could add a Melodious Monster from your graveyard to your hand except a Soprano. So how are we gonna special summon the Soprano? You could do it with Super Team Buddy Force Unite, which we talked about earlier, or we could use the main card, First Movement Solo. With no monsters, activate this, summon your Soprano, add a monster from the grave, or summon any other Melodious to use alongside your Soprano. Very nice. Now, Fortismo, not so good. You could send it to the grave to fuse using monsters on the field. Maybe you wanna use Polymerization instead. Melodious Illusion, not so good. It's a slow Forbidden Lance, makes it so your monster can attack twice, also unaffected by spell and traps. There's no good way to search this card, so no good. Now, Diva, Diva Sonata, and the Diva, where's the other one that's good? Cannon, these are the two that can be special summoned from your hand if you control a monster. Control a monster like Soprano, special summon the Cannon, or the other one, Sonata, then you can fuse. Now, Sonata on the field will boost up your monsters by 500. So you could Sonata into a Sonata, boost up by plus 1,000 when it's a base 1,200. Now, the other ones are not really worth talking about too much. This on special, add a polymerization to your hand. Solo is worth talking about as when it dies by battle, it could summon your Soprano. It could summon any of your Melodious monsters from the deck onto the field when destroyed by battle. And if you control no cards, no monsters, I should say, and your opponent controls a monster, you could special summon solo from your hand. 
then perform your normal summon with Soprano Fusion. That's it. That's pretty much it. Serenade is a double tribute. The double tribute monsters are not good. Opera is a huge level 4, 2300 attack monster. Can't attack the turn and summon because of that. But if you use it for the fusion alongside Soprano, you will be protected from cards like Treacherous and Spirit Master for that turn. Now, here is the concept deck. This is what it looks like. Shout out to Ali Balez for the deck idea. And here are some combos. YouTube, let's do a quick little play. Our opening hand is this. So quick sample hand. We would, this is not so good inherently. We would normal summon Soprano, set the Phoenix Chain, set the Super Team Buddy Force Unite, pass back to our opponent. They take out the Soprano. We Fiendish Chain, and then he takes out the Phoenix Chain, and we are sitting on a Super Team Buddy Force Unite, okay? So then we draw for our turn. We draw a first movement. Activate first movement to special summon a D.Va, all right? Now we got D.Va on the field. D.Va on special summon doesn't do anything special. It is boosting up your monsters, though. Now we can normal summon Soprano. Then we're going to activate Soprano using the D.Va and the Soprano to fuse into the Shiberta. Shiberta can now banish three cards in the grave from either player's grave to get buff boosted permanently, 200 per card. But we're not done. We're going to activate Super Team Buddy Force Unite to special summon Soprano onto the field. Soprano will activate, add D.Va from the grave to the hand, and then we could special summon D.Va, and then again, we can make another Shiberta, or we could fuse into Bloom Prima, which will gain 300 for each fusion material, and if sent to the grave, add a monster from the grave back to the hand, also perform double attack. So that is a nice little sample play with this deck. Now we're going to do another quick sample hand right in front of you, no cuts, boom. So we got this, we could first movement, activate, special summon a Soprano, very nice. Special summon the Diva, and then we can fuse into the Shiberta. Now, if we want to, we could normal summon the Soprano again. Is this only a once per turn effect? This says, you can only use the effect of Soprano once per turn. So you cannot Soprano and then Soprano, so you'd wanna wait. So probably something will happen to this we'll draw for our turn let's shuffle our deck draw for our turn then we could do our plays like this we could now here's a, a confliction if you have first movement solo and the solo you can't use both if you activate this you can't special summon the solo if you special summon the solo you can't activate the first movement so they're both kind of very similar so we would then special summon if we want we could special summon a soprano we don't even need the Soprano in the hand. We special summon Soprano. Soprano will add from the graveyard, add the Diva Sonata to the hand, special summon, and then fuse again. So very good. That's a good example of if you already fuse and you have a Sonata in the hand, with your first movement, you could special summon Soprano on summon, add a monster from the grave back to the hand, then refuse again. Basically a one, a one card fusion with first movement with Soprano on the deck if you already used it. And that is very nice. And then if you, if it's not on the deck, we have the Super Team Buddy Force Unite to special summon from the hand or from the grave, hopefully Soprano to add the Sonata from the grave back to the hand. Now, I'm not so sure about playing solo in this deck. Be, due to how much we're using the Sonata, I probably would prefer to maybe also play the Cannon. The Cannon is very similar to the Sonata. It just not, the, its second effect is not that good. That is the quick review of Melodious. Let's talk about Worms, where I will have a concept deck and plays. Now, Carteros and Nebula are synergy cards. They do not, they're not new. Carteros could search for the new worm we're getting on flip, and Nebula breaks the deck. You could draw with it, flip your monsters up, then flip them back down, and special summon a Worm King from your deck by using this card. You'll see it in play, don't worry. Worm King also not new. So these three cards that are not new are just supporting the new cards. This, when special summon with your Nebula, or you could single tribute summon, will be able to tribute itself or other worms you control to destroy any card in the field. It's incredible. Also, other synergy cards to consider are Ananta, which banishes reptiles to summon, and then it gets bigger per banished reptile. Also, in the end phase, destroy one card on the field. Also, Lamia is a reptile tuner, great with other reptiles to synchro with. Now, what are the new cards? Zex. 
Worm Zex on summon will create this field where you summon a Jaegen alongside it, but you're going to have the Jaegen face down. So it's 1800. If a Jaegen is face up, then the Zex cannot be destroyed by battle. Now, why is Jaegen face down after on summon sending it to the from the deck to the graveyard? Well, if the only monster you control is a Zex, you could special summon it face down on flip 1800 defense, by the way, select a face up monster your opponent controls, return it to the hand. So get ready for this two card combo. I played this in the TCG. This is broken. The combo is just two cards, a Zex and a Nebula Meteorite. So anything that protects this combo or makes this combo more consistent, that's all you need to focus on. So you are going to see the combo in the replays. Let's go. You're going to summon Zex. Zex is going to send Jaegen. Jaegen's now in the grave. Now Jaegen is going to special summon onto the field and it's going to be face down defense. Then you're going to set the Nebula. Now Nebula says change face down monsters on the field face up. And then, so th th that means whenever you want, you could flip up the Jaegen to send a monster your opponent controls back to the hand. And then you really have to hope that your monsters live this turn. And hopefully the Jaegen helps you do that because if they live in the end phase, you're gonna change all your face up reptiles to face down. Then, so hopefully in the end phase, you have both of these. You're gonna go face down, face down. And per monster you flipped face down, you're gonna draw a card. One, two, draw, draw, okay? And then after you drew two cards, hopefully you draw two cards with this combo, you could special summon a level seven or higher light reptile from your deck. So we're gonna pretend like the king's in the deck and we're gonna special summon king onto the field. And all that was from the Nebular Meteorite where you also got to draw two cards. Then on your turn, you could flip up the Jaegen, send a card, your, uh, again, a monster, your opponent controls back to the hand. And then Worm King says, you could tribute a worm monster to select any card in the field and destroy it. So from a single Zex and a Nebula, you draw two, special king, destroy two, and send two monsters. That is absurd. Hey, this hand sucks. So into the void, draw. Hey, the hand doesn't suck anymore. Let's Zex, view the deck. Send Jaegen, special summon Jaegen, put Jaegen face down. We're gonna discard anyway, let's draw again. Hey, this hand's really good. Hey, this is looking like it's pre-recorded, but it's not. Wow, we win. We set, we set, we discard King. Our opponent goes, we're gonna flip up chain if needed, we don't need to, but we could also flip up Nebula. We could now flip this up, send their card back to their hand. And then in the end phase, we're going to flip down, flip down, draw, draw. Then special summon King in their end phase. Now it's our turn. Draw. They probably have nothing for us to send back to the hand with Jaegen. So we're just going to use King. King, tribute a reptile worm. You could tribute while it's face down. You could tribute the Zex. Pop a card. Tribute the Jaegen. Pop a card. Summon a Zex. Zex could send another Jaegen. Now, Jaegen says only when you control just a Zex. You can't summon Jaegen to do more. So we could destroy another card. And just like that, Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. We could even, it, it might even be considered to be a good play to simply destroy the king itself, then set the nebula meteorite and another Phoenix chain, special summon Jaegen back on the field. And then we have the nebula meteor again. So we could flip that up again, draw two again, and then, you know, that's the plays. That was a great, that's YouTube. There you go. YouTube, that's a deck concept. Love it. That's how worms are going to be. Pop cards, send cards back, draw cards, special summon king. It's nuts. Yo Senju have received new support. Yo Senju, Karma 1. We have Karma 2. We have Karma 3. Why do we want Karma 1? Well, all the Yo Senjus, the 1, 2, and 3, on summon, you could summon another one. So you could summon one, then summon two, then summon three. They all go back to your hand in the end phase. Because of that, usually their effects are amazing. Two can attack directly. 
Three says when you deal battle damage, you could search your deck for any Osunju. Now, one, what does this do? It is a super rare. It says if you control another Yosunju monster, target any face-up card your opponent controls, return it back to the hand. Back to the hand. And it is once per turn on per the card. So you could summon a Karma 1, then summon a Karma 2, then Karma 2 will allow you to summon another Karma 1. Both your 1s can return one card back to the hand, returning 2. Now here is a concept build of what the deck could look like. Not the best way to play, just a concept, just so you could understand how the deck is going to work when it comes out. And let's look at the plays. So obviously if we go first, we can't really do any plays. We set, we set, they go. We lose all our back row, but we did some good plays and they have a monster on their side of the field and we lost everything. So now we're gonna draw. Well, the way you want to do this is you want to Karma 1, 600 attack, activate, summon Karma 2, activate, summon Karma 1. This will return two face-up cards on the field back to the hand. Back to the hand, and Karma 2 can attack directly, but we likely sent their face-up monsters back to the hand, so attacking directly and having its attacks not going to be important here, but that's lethal right there. If they did a big play and we had to use all these and they ended up having a face-up monster afterward, not a face-down one from Floodgate, and just like that, all right, let's do a new hand. Karma 2, 3. So what's good about this is you could Karma 2, which performs an additional summon into Karma 3, and then you can attack directly with Karma 2, they activate a, f a Fiendish Chain or something, you lance it. So now it's protected by dealing that direct damage over their set monster. And they got multiple back row, but they already used it because we lanced it also. That's gonna trigger Karma 3. Karma 3 will now search the deck for Karma 1 if you want to. If you want to be more protective, you'd probably search for OEM. OEM, when they attack directly, you could summon this onto the field by discarding a Yosun Ju. But if we wanted to, just for this uh, sample, we grab the Karma 1. Everything goes back to the hand in the end phase. They make their play. It doesn't matter. We will shuffle the deck, draw a new card. Boom. And then there you go. We got the 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Three will search a card when we deal damage. Two can attack directly for half its attack, and one can return any face-up card your opponent controls back to the hand. So that's crazy. Lots of plussing. Deal with the fusion. Deal with the synchro. Return it back to the hand. I like Karma 1. Those are your sample hands. Let's talk about the next deck. Red Eyes Gear Freed. Ultra rare support for the red eye structure deck. And this is coming out alongside Dark Side of Dimension Joey, but not coming with Joey. Instead, it's an ultra rare in the box. I'm sorry. I went back and forth in email with Konami. I said, come on, give it to Joey. They said, no, we got to put it in the mini box and you're going to sell it, DK. And I go, okay, you got me. So I'm sorry. This will make red eyes decks better. It is ultra rare. It is in the mini box. You got to deal with it. I tried. So what's good about this? It is non-targeting back row destruction if you equip it with an equip card. You equip it with an equip card, it will destroy the equip card and then destroy a back row card your opponent controls. It's also optional. So maybe if you wanna just destroy your equip card because it has an effect when sent to the grave. It also has a second effect. Its second effect is instead of destroying your equip card, keep it on. And then you could just send the equip card to the graveyard during main phase one while the first effect can happen during either player's turn whenever, whenever you perform that equip action. You could, during main phase one, send the equip card to the graveyard to special summon a red eyes monster from the grave onto the field. Red eyes monster? Well, a great red eyes monster is Slash Dragon. 2800 attack Slash Dragon will be summoned from the grave back onto the field. That is incredible. Also, it's a Red Eyes monster. Because it's a Red Eyes monster, it works with Red Eyes Spirit, which you'll see in the replays that I'm about to show you, to summon it back in the field. Black Metal Dragon. You could target a Red Eyes monster, which the Gear Freed is, equip it onto it, then you could destroy it right away on your first turn. They don't need back row, then you could search for your Red Eyes Fusion. That is great synergy with your Gear Freed, the Red Eyes Iron Knight. Because when this sends to the graveyard, search for a Red Eyes card. 
Blast with Chain, this card is great. Equip it onto your gear freed, pop a back row plus any other card. Smoke Grenade of the Thief. You can equip it on your gear freed turn one and then destroy it right away. Look at your opponent's hand, send any card from their hand to the grave. That could be pretty funny. Here is a deck concept, a conceptual build. I'm not saying this is the way to play it. I would add Red Eye Spirit to it, so I believe you'll see that in the replays. Red Eye Spirit is definitely a card you want in this deck to summon your Gear Freed. So let's check out the combos. We have Gear Freed plus Blast to a Chain. And we could also equip with the Black Metal if we want to, and then not use its effect. Then on our opponent's turn, they set a back row, set a monster, they end their turn. We blast with chain in the end phase onto the gear freed. And then gear freed is going to destroy the blast with chain, destroy their back row card, then blast with chain will destroy their monster. That's nuts. Then we're gonna draw for our turn. We draw into red eyes fusion, we win. Red eyes fusion, send a gear freed, send a red eyes to summon slash dragon, clap fools, just like that. And then on the attack, we'll equip the gear freed from the grave. So if anything happens, it will be resummoned. And if we want, we could also equip the power of the guardian onto the gear freed, destroy a back row card if we want to. Now, if we equip the power of the guardian onto the gear freed, you could destroy those equip cards. Okay, you can't destroy the black metal by equipping the power of the guardian. That's something that you'd want to know. Equip and equip card multiple. Okay, let's do another test hand. That was pretty good. Boom, another test hand. Now, let's say we didn't have insight and we really want to have a red eyes fusion. What you could do, but you can't use it this turn, you could equip the black metal, then destroy the black metal. Even if they have no back row cards, then add a red eyes fusion. You can't use your red eyes fusion this turn though, so it's kind of not a good play. So very simply, we would just do the insight, send a uh, red eyes from the deck or hand, whatever. We would want to probably play Retro or Wyvern so we don't have to send a uh, Black Dragon to grab the uh, fusion. This is just a concept build though. And then we would fuse after not summoning the Gear Freed and then we have Slash Dragon. And then just, you know, equipping the Gear Freed is good. So when we send the Gear Freed to the grave, we equip it on the attack, something happens, they destroy the Slash Dragon. Slash Dragon will summon the Gear Freed that was equipped. Then it's our turn. Then we can equip the Black Metal Dragon onto the Gear Freed. Immediately, destroy. we don't have to destroy it, we could just leave it and then send it to the graveyard to special summon Slash Dragon. And then we'll search for a Red Eye Spirit. Then Red Eye Spirit with the Blastless Chain. Are you following me? Hopefully we didn't get lost here, okay? So Gear Freed was summoned from Slash Dragon. Then the Slash Dragon was summoned from Gear Freed, okay? And then let's say they wiped out our field. We have good play still. We have Blast Chain and Red Eye Spirit. We could Red Eye Spirit for a Gear Freed, then put the Blast Chain onto the Gear Freed, destroy it, destroy a back of card. If we want to, it's optional. Then destroy a monster they control. That's a nice little combo. Very nice.